All right, everybody, welcome back. You know what we're doing here, right? Deep dive time. Back into the trenches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And today we're looking at something that I think a lot of people are curious about. But I don't think that many people outside of academia actually really know how it works. Right. Which is peer review. Yeah. Of scientific journal articles. Absolutely. And, you know, we all read these things, right? We all look at these journals. I'll cite them, yeah. Yeah, we cite them. And uh, and we take it for granted that this stuff has gone through some kind of a process. Mm -hmm. And uh, But what is yeah. that process? Yeah, it's a very black box for a lot of people. Yeah, and today we're going to open that box up and really see what's going on in there. Yeah. So um, I think it's good to start by just saying why this is even important. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Why do we even need to peer review these articles? So yeah. uh, what's the deal? Well, you know, research, especially in medicine, it has really high stakes. Um, and we want to make sure that anything that gets published and then potentially influences, you know, clinical practice or other research right. is actually high quality. It's good science. Yeah, it's good, solid science. Right. And that's what peer review is all about. Yeah. And so, so basically what's happening is we're getting other experts in the same field. Yeah. As the person who wrote the article. Subject matter experts. Yeah. To kind of take a look and say, mm -hmm. you know, does this hold water? Yeah. yeah exactly. Is this is this the real deal or is this, you know, something we should be suspicious of? Mm -hmm. And and I think, um, you know, one of the things that we have here that we can use as kind of a uh, as a guide is this template for a good peer review. Yeah. This is a great tool. Yeah. It's really useful when you're approaching a manuscript for the first time. Yeah, because it can be kind of overwhelming. It can. Right. You got this whole article you got to read through and, you know, where do you even begin? Yeah. And this template gives you like a step by step yeah. guide to make sure that you're hitting all the major points. Yeah. Awesome. So why don't we just kind of walk through this template and, and hit those major points? OK, sounds good. All right. So first off, we got the title. Right. Um, This seems really basic, right? But. I imagine that there's more to this than meets the eye. Yeah, you would think it's just a title, but it's actually really important that the title accurately reflects right. what the paper is about. Right. Um, you know, I've seen some titles that are kind of like misleading or they oversell the findings. Oh, really? Yeah, and that can be a problem because people might cite the paper based on the title alone wow. without actually reading the whole thing. So it's got to be catchy, but it's also got to be accurate. Yeah, catchy but accurate. That's interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. So what about, uh, so then after the title, we've got this evaluation of the research's strengths and weaknesses. Yes. So this is where we really get into the meat of it. Yeah, this is where you really put on your critical thinking hat and, and right. really assess, you know, is this research sound? Are the findings novel? Do they add something new to the field? Right. Um, are the methods solid? Is the data analysis robust? So you're basically looking for any red flags, yeah. right? Like anything that would make you question the validity of the research. Like exactly. What kind of red flags would you typically see? Well, some common ones are issues with the sample size. Okay. Like if it's too small, that can make the findings unreliable. Right. Um, also, statistical errors. Yeah. You know, are they using the right statistical tests? Sure. Um, and then also potential biases in the study design. Oh, interesting. That could skew the results. So, so it's really like detective work almost. It is. You're looking for clues, yeah. trying to figure out if this research holds up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Scrutiny. That's such a good analogy. Yeah, I like that one. Okay, so we've talked about the title. We've talked about, you know, the overall strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the abstract. Okay. Because for a lot of people, that's all they're going to read. Right. The abstract is super important. Yeah. Because like you said, a lot of people are busy. They don't have time to read the whole paper. Sure. So they rely on the abstract to get the gist of the research. Yeah. And, you know, I know as a, you know, somebody who reads these journals a lot, like, if the abstract doesn't grab me, I'm probably not going to read the rest of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's got to be good. It's got to be clear. It's got to be concise. Concise, clear, and accurate. And accurate. No clickbait allowed. No clickbait. Okay, there. cool. Yeah. So what about the introduction? Okay, so the introduction, this is where the author set the stage for the research. Okay. They lay out the research question, the rationale. You know, why is this research important? Yeah. Why should we care? Yeah. And they also state the specific objectives of the study. Oh, okay. What are they trying to find out? Cool. And so then that brings us to the methods section. Yes, the methods. This is where we find out exactly how they did the research, right? Exactly. This is like the recipe yeah. for the research. Okay. So it needs to be very detailed. Right. And clear. So that somebody else could replicate the study. Exactly. Reproducibility is key. 
Right. If you can't replicate it, how do you know if it's valid? Exactly. Uh, and this is particularly important now because there's this whole reproducibility crisis in science. Oh, yeah. I've heard of that. Where a lot of studies can't be replicated, wow. which is a big problem. So mm -hmm. a good method section can help mitigate that risk. OK, cool. So then once we know how they did it, mm -hmm. we want to know what they found. Right? Yeah. So let's talk about the results. The results. This is where the data speaks for itself. OK. So they should be presented in a very objective way. No opinions, just the facts. Just the facts, ma'am. OK. No interpretation or spin, just the data. And so what kind of things would you be looking for in the results section as a reviewer? Well, first of all, I'd be making sure that the results are presented clearly and concisely. OK. Um, and that they're organized in a logical way. Right. Um, I'd also be checking to make sure that they align with the methods that were used. You know, any mismatch, there would be a red flag. So like if they said they were going to do a certain type of statistical analysis. Right. And then the results don't reflect that. Exactly. That would be a problem. OK, cool. Yeah. And then we got the discussion. Ah, the discussion. This is where things get interesting. Okay. This is where the authors get to interpret their findings That's and so. tell us what they think it all means. Okay. But it's important that they also place their findings within the context of existing research. Okay. So have they considered all the relevant studies? Right. Do their findings support or contradict previous work? So it's not just about their study in isolation. It's about how it fits into the bigger picture. Exactly. And a good discussion is balanced and critical okay and it's transparent about the study's limitations right because every study has limitations every study has limitations yeah and it's important to acknowledge those so the discussion is kind of like the so what section i like that yeah like what does this all mean and where do we go from here yeah exactly yeah. and that leads us to the conclusion all right so the conclusion Wrap it all up for us. Wrap it up nicely and succinctly. Okay. Summarize the key findings, the relevance to the field. Okay. And potential avenues for future research. Awesome. Yeah. And of course, we got to have those references. The references, yes. Got to give credit where credit is due. Give credit, but also it's about transparency. Right. It allows readers to go back and verify the information. Yeah. And delve deeper into the supporting evidence. Okay. And then just lastly, we got those tables and images. Yeah. Visuals are important. Yeah. They can really help to make the data more understandable. Yeah. Make it more digestible. Yeah. Um, so they should be clear, well-labeled. Right. And organized logically. Awesome. Yeah. Well, this has been super informative. It's a complex process. It is. But, you know, I think the more we understand about peer review, mm. the more we can appreciate the value of it. You know, and, and the role that it plays in ensuring the quality of medical research. Yeah, it's really important. Yeah. So the next time you're reading one of those journal articles, yeah. you know, just keep in mind that it's gone through this whole process. Yes. Um, and, you know, maybe you'll even be inspired to become a peer reviewer yourself. Yeah. You never know. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive. It's been my pleasure. It's been great having you. And we'll see you next time. See you later. Bye. Bye.